This video will provide an overview for the FL5000 series product. The FL5000 series displays are designed for easy installation, readability, and reliability. The drop-in displays are designed for installation in an existing or custom sign structure. The FL5000 series display cabinets, specially developed for outdoor use, are constructed of heavy gauge aluminum. LED modules are black and are set directly into the surface of the display. Amber, blue, green, red, or white LEDs are used to illuminate digits in different font styles. So how would you identify the display model? This can be done by locating the model number, which is listed on a label located inside the display. The display model numbers are defined as follows. The first two sections showing FL5000 is the product series. The section for HH will identify the digit height in inches. The R could be an A, a B, a G, an R, or a W, which would represent the color of the display. And the DI section just defines it as a drop-in. Before installing or servicing, here are some important things to make note of. Only qualified individuals should perform power and signal routing to the display and termination at the display. Dectronics engineering staff must approve all proposed changes or the warranty will be void. Improper installation could result in serious damage to the equipment and could be hazardous to personnel. Now, let's review the components that make up these displays. Starting with the modules. The FL5000 uses a fully populated matrix array module, which allows for greater flexibility on fuel price presentation and are shared across multiple sizes. These modules have a sensor used for auto dimming and a keyhole for removing the module. On the back, you will have two signal ports. Port A is signal in and port B is signal out. Then, in the middle is a power port. These modules also have latches on the bottom, so be careful when handling to ensure nothing gets damaged. Remove by inserting a 1 8 inch Allen wrench or T-handle into the latch access hole toward the top center of the module and gently turn counterclockwise. Carefully tilt the module away from the cabinet and lift up and out. Disconnect the power harness and the line cables, making note of which cable is connected to which port. Then, set aside the module while servicing the display. Next is the line-to-line -line signal cable. The signal starts at port A, signal in, and routes to port B, signal out, continuing this through the modules in each display, and then the sign interconnection signal travels from the last module, port B, in the signal chain of the first display cabinet out to the first module, port A, in the second display cabinet. It is recommended to have these form a U pattern through displays. The last display will have an open port B signal jack on its last module. Be sure to route cables at least 6 inches away from interfering sources like ballast, fluorescent light bulbs, power sources, any type of motor, etc. Coil the cable and zip tie it together and carefully place the coil inside the display cabinet. Up next is the power. The FL5000 series displays do not require local earth ground electrode. The displays are designed so the most sensitive components are isolated and a local earth ground electrode is not required and is no longer recommended. The displays still require a safety ground from the electrical service panel for the primary power wires to comply with national electric codes. Please note that local earth ground electrode requirements for other Dectronics products remain unchanged. There is a power supply in each cabinet. These are commonly located behind the top left panel of a display cabinet. To replace, once inside the cabinet, use a 5 16 inch nut driver to loosen the nut securing the power termination cover shown here. Slide the cover to the right and lift it off the keyhole. Disconnect the power harness and use wire nuts or other appropriate hardware to disconnect incoming power wires. Make note that the power may be daisy chained out from the first display termination location to the second display and from the second to the third and so on. Reverse these steps to install a new power supply back into the display cabinet, ensuring that you are wiring it back up correctly. And the last component we're going to discuss is the receiver and the antenna. For the communication, there will be a receiver inside the display and an antenna on the display as well. This is located on the grandparent display, meaning the very first display on the pylon or monument. 
This communicates with an FLR 5400 key fob. The antenna is connected to the cable, which is then connected to the receiver card. The receiver card then has a 4-pin to 4-pin line connector cable connecting to the first module in the display. The key fob that is used to communicate with the displays can update prices as well as configuring fonts or setting formats and many more things. These price displays are capable of showing 10th digit, meaning we can show up to $19.99 for a price. The multiple font choices provide options to match brand image or personal preferences. We will go more in depth on the control in another video covering the FL5000 communication method.